포마가시는 전 세계 목회자분들과 신학생 네, greetings pastors, seminarians and believers from all over the world who hope in heaven and eternal life. It is nice to meet you. 저는 신천지 예수 교회 다디오 지파 경주 교회 담임 My name is Song Yeonggil, the head of Gyeongju Church of Thaddeus Drive of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I sincerely thank you for attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, the Testimony of Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. The title of the lesson that we'll be looking at today is Intermediate Lesson Number 17, The Reality of the Tree of Life, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Main reference, John chapter 15. And we will also look at Genesis chapter 2 and 3, Daniel chapter 4, and Revelation chapter 22. The tree of life and the tree of good and evil clearly appears in the Bible. However, pastors all over the world are unable to give a certain answer to what these two trees may be. Therefore, at this time, please listen to the explanation of Shincheonji regarding the tree of life and the tree of good and evil and find their true meaning. Let me tell you about the main point of John chapter 15, which is today's main reference chapter. John chapter 15 is composed of 27 verses. Verses 1 to 8 are regarding the true vine and the 12 branches and their fruits. Verses 9 to 17 are regarding Jesus' commands and love. Verses 18 to 27 are regarding the persecution those who belong to God receive. First, let's read John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8, and organize its content. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus calls himself the true vine. And the twelve disciples, the branches. Also, he cuts off every branch that does not become one with Jesus to true vine and bear fruit. But if one does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Here, fruits are referring to believers who are born of the word of truth. As we can see in James chapter 1, verse 18, also a branch that has been pruned is a person who becomes one with Jesus and washes one's spirit clean with Jesus's words. Also, according to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, it is someone who has obeyed the words of truth. Then why does Jesus call himself the true vine? It is because as a tree planted by the true God, he was trying to distinguish himself from the fake Gentile wild vines of Isaiah chapter 5, that he calls himself the true vine. The true vine and the wild vine are referring to a tree that belongs to God and a tree that belongs to Satan. 
which are also figuratively written as the tree of life and the tree of good and evil. Let's see what it says from verse 6 and on. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. It is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Jesus, who is the true vine, says that the branches that do not become one with him and bear fruit will be cut off from the trunk of the tree and be burned in fire. But if Jesus' words remain in us and we remain in Jesus, then our prayers will absolutely be answered. And Jesus says that by bearing fruit, God can receive glory. And we can truly become Jesus' disciples. The words of John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8, clearly displays the importance of becoming one with Jesus, the true vine, and bearing fruit, which is talking about the work of evangelism. In order to completely perceive the meaning of the true vine, we must understand what trees are figuratively in the Bible. In the Bible, there are only two spiritual kinds of trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. These two tr trees. Then let's find out about what the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil are. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, in the Garden of Eden, there is a tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Today, in this lecture, we will shorten the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as the tree of good and evil. The events of the Bible began with these two kinds of trees. It says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22, that if one eats the fruit of the tree of life, he will have eternal life. But it is stated in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, if one eats the fruit of the tree of good and evil, he will surely die. If the matter of living or dying came as a result of these two kinds of trees and two fruits, then isn't it important to perceive what these are? Then how is it that we weren't able to know this important answer until now? It is because God hid it as a secret the tree of life and the tree of good and evil are a secret that was hidden since creation. Jesus spoke about them in parables 2,000 years ago. However, it is today, at the time of the second coming and the fulfillment of Revelation, that everything is being made known plainly. The tree of life and the tree of good and evil are not referring to physical trees. They are parables. The tree of life is a tree grown from God's seed of life, whereas the tree of good and evil is a tree grown from Satan's seed of death. I will now explain these parables of the tree of life and the tree of good and evil written figuratively throughout the Bible and regarding their fruits. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13, 31 to 32, that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed a mustard seed in his field. When this small seed grows to become a large tree, then the birds in the air come and perch in its branches. He says, 
This is heaven. Then, what is God's seed? Tree, branches, and bird that make up heaven. Luke chapter 8 verse 11 says that seed is God's word. John chapter 15 verse 1 states that God's true pastor, Jesus, is like a tree. John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus' disciples are the branches. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, the Holy Spirit is referred to as a figurative bird. Putting everything together, we can see that the kingdom of heaven is referring to a true pastor born of God's seed and the word and his organization and the Holy Spirit coming down upon them. This is heaven. Then who was the reality of the tree that made up heaven 2,000 years ago? It was Jesus. Jesus. God's Son, and God's Holy Spirit descended on Him. And it says in John chapter 14, verse 6, that He is the way, and the truth, and the life. Therefore, Jesus who is life, and the true vine, the promised pastor Jesus, was the reality of the tree of life at the first coming. And the twelve disciples are the branches. Hence, the reality of the tree of life is God, who is the source of life. And the true pastor and his organization, whom God is with, at the first coming, it was Jesus and the twelve disciples. Now let's find out about the wild vine which is another word for the tree of good and evil. In Isaiah chapter 5, the choicest vineyard was planted, yet it yielded bad crop. And this choicest vine that yielded bad fruit is referred to as the men of Judah. Therefore, people are like figurative trees. This wild vine grown from the devil's seed of death, was a prophecy regarding the tree of good and evil. Then to understand what the tree of good and evil is, let's read Daniel chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. The tree you saw, which grew large and strong, with its top touching the sky, visible to the whole earth, with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit, providing food for all, giving shelter to the beasts of the field and having nesting places in its branches for the birds of the air. You, O king, are that tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky and your dominion extends to distant parts of the earth. Looking at Daniel chapter 4, the king of Babylon is a large tree. And under this tree, there are beasts of the field and also birds that perch in its branches. Because it says that it is the beasts of the field that are taking shelter there, this tree must be a wild vine, right? Also, the birds that are having nesting places in these branches must, of course, be referring to evil spirits. Because Jesus, whom the Holy Spirit has descended on, is the true vine and the tree of life, the king of Babylon, whom the evil spirit has descended on, is like a wild vine and the tree of good and evil. Furthermore, the people who belong to the king of Babylon, their organization, is like the figurative branches, leaves, and fruits. Therefore, the true meaning of the tree of good and evil is Satan the false pastors, and their organization whom Satan is one with. At the first coming, the reality of the tree of good and evil 
were the false pastors, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, whom Jesus called snakes and the brood of vipers, and their synagogue members. To organize the reality of the tree of life and the tree of good and evil, the tree of life is God, true pastor, and his organization. The meaning of the tree of good and evil is Satan, false pastors, and their organization. Now let's find out the reality of the tree of life and the tree of good and evil at the time of the Lord's second coming. Let's read Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 to 2. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Just as Jesus and the twelve disciples came as the tree of life and bore fruits at the first coming, at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 22, there is a person who is born of the word of life, who becomes a tree of life, and through the twelve tribes, fruits are born. Today, at the time of the Lord's second coming, Jesus, who is the tree of life, has chosen the Him who overcomes of Revelation chapter 2 and 3 as an advocate and works with Him. Jesus said in, in Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 that on Him who overcomes will be recorded the name of God, Jesus, and the name of the heaven in the spiritual world, the holy city, New Jerusalem. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, Jesus promised that he who overcomes will be able to sit with Jesus on his throne. Therefore, the promised pastor of the New Testament, the he who overcomes, whom Jesus, the tree of life, is one with, is the reality of the tree of life at the time of the Lord's second coming. Also, it says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, that he who overcomes will be able to eat the fruit of the tree of life in paradise. This paradise is referring to the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world, where God dwells. And the fruit of the tree of life is the revealed word of Revelation chapter 10, this open book given by God and Jesus who are the tree of life. Not only so, but also in the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel of Revelation chapter 7, the new kingdom and new people of Revelation chapter 21, which are the 12 tribes of Shincheonji that has been created through him who overcomes are also the reality of the tree of life to organize the tree of life and the twelve branches at the Lord's second coming is the promised pastor, him overcomes, New John, and the twelve tribes of Shincheonji. The true meaning of the fruit of the tree of life is the word of truth, the revealed word of the physical fulfillment of the New Testament promised by Jesus in blood. Furthermore, it is believers who are born of the word of truth, as we can see in James chapter 1, verse 18, and Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. The only place that bears 12 crops of fruits every month, just like the words of Revelation chapter 22, is Shincheonji, the 12 drives. There is no other place in this world where 12 tribes bear fruits. God fulfilled the new covenant revelation and created the 12 tribes of Shincheonji by harvesting and sealing those who are born of God's seed. 
And at this place, as promised in Revelation chapter 21, the holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down from heaven and becomes one. This is the reality of the tree of life in Revelation chapter 22. Although birds are not recorded, together with the tree of life in Revelation chapter 22, the birds will surely come and perch in the branches of the tree. The figurative birds are referring to spirits. Therefore, the bird that perch in the tree of life is surely the Holy Spirit, right? God is in spirit. Jesus and angels and the murders are all Holy Spirits. And they are together with the tree of life in Revelation chapter 22. This in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 32 is called heaven. Therefore, this tree of life is the tree of heaven. Let's read Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 to 5 to find out the reality of the tree of good and evil at the second coming. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. This title was written on her forehead, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the Mother of Prostitutes and of the Abominations of the Earth. What is the reality of the tree of good and evil at the Lord's second coming? In Revelation chapter 17, a prostitute is riding on a beast with seven heads and ten horns, and on her forehead, name is recorded, Babylon. Going to Revelation chapter 18, this Babylon is Satan's kingdom which made all nations fall, figuratively referring to a tree, the tree of good and evil, or the wild vine, which the detestable birds have come. This Babylon prostitute and her organization had relations with Satan and received his spirit and got married to him. They are the pastors of Satan who gave birth to spiritual children with Satan's seed. Like the king of Babylon in Daniel chapter 4, they are the reality of the tree of good and evil. To organize the reality of the tree of good and evil at the Lord's second coming is this prostitute Babylon and her organization. This Babylon prostitute and her organization made all nations fall with the wine of adulteries and had them married the devil. The churches today are included in all nations that have fallen, right? Then what is the true meaning of Babylon's maddening wine of adulteries which made all nations fall? It says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 33, that the wine of the enemy is the poison of snakes and the venom of cobras. So the true meaning of the fruit of good and evil is false doctrine, or in other words, commentaries given by false pastors were like snakes. However, the tree of good and evil, which had been deceiving all nations like this for the past 6,000 years, is not seen in Revelation chapter 22. Why is it so? It is because the tree of good and evil of Babylon is judged, and it disappears, and the dragon is locked up in the abyss. Therefore, in Revelation chapter 22, only the tree of life exists and the era of God's reign, who is the tree of life, begins.
Today, at the second coming, I hope that all of us perceive the reality of the tree of life and the tree of good and evil and come out from all nations which have been deceived and belong to the twelve branches of the tree of life and receive salvation and eternal life. Now let's organize the words of John chapter 15, verse 9 to 17. John chapter 15, verse 9 to 17, Jesus gives us commands and speaks about love. From verses 9 and on, he says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Jesus says that just as he kept God's commands to remain in God's love, when we keep Jesus' commands, we can remain in Jesus' love. And the command that Jesus gives us, the disciples, is to love one another. Next, let's look at verse 13 and on. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I learned from my father I have made known to you. Jesus says that a servant does not know his master's business, but because he has made known to the disciples everything that he had learned from his father, if we do according to Jesus' commands, then we will be a friend. And after stating that there is no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends, Jesus showed this very love to us. Now let's examine what it says from verse 17, 16 and on. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. To organize this, Jesus chose and appointed the disciples to bear fruit in Jesus. To bear fruit means to organize and to evangelize with the words that Jesus has given us and to rear God's children. Next, let's see what it says in verses 18 to 27 regarding persecution those who belong to God received. Let's see. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you, no servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. Jesus says that the reason why the world hates the disciples and persecuted them was because they did not belong to the world, but they have been chosen out of the world by Jesus. 
At the time, the world that persecuted Jesus and the disciples was the world of religion, of Judaism, which was under Satan's control. The reason why this world persecutes God's kingdom is because different gods are in control. Then how can we distinguish those who belong to God and those who belong to the devil? Looking at Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 to 12, the persecutors are those who belong to the devil, and the persecuted are those who belong to God. Then the fundamental reason of why those who belong to the devil persecute those who belong to God is so that people cannot listen to the words of truth which those who belong to God or testifying to. This is why they lie and persecute. Let's see what it says from verses 21 and on. They will treat you this way because of my name. For they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, however, they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father as well. Jesus said that the world will do all kinds of evil because of Jesus' name. And the reason why the world persecutes is because they do not know God. If Jesus didn't make known God to them, then they, would, they could have said they didn't know. However, because it was all made known to them, they cannot give excuses. What can we think about at this point? Is that today's promised pastor of Shincheonji also testifies about the New Testament prophecy and fulfillment, which had been sealed in parables. Therefore, no one can give an excuse that they persecuted out of ignorance. Every, everyone, haven't you heard that Shincheonji is harvesting according to the words of promise in the Bible? But every church has put up sign that says Shincheonji harvesters prohibited. Then how could they give an excuse that they have not heard the news? Also because Je Jesus says that those who hate Jesus are hating God. So please understand that those who hate the Him who overcomes sent by Jesus are hating Jesus. Let's read what it says from verse 24 and on. If I had not done among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. Just as how Jesus was able to carry out work that no one could do because Jesus was with him, because God was with him, today, the promised pastor of the New Testament, he who overcomes, is carrying out work that no one else could do because Jesus is with him. At the first coming, Jesus sowed God's seed as God promised, made a new covenant, proclaimed peace, and bore the cross for our sins, and fulfilled every prophecy inside of the Old Testament. And the promised pastor of the New Testament, him who overcomes New John, has harvested those who are born of God's seed, and sealed, as promised. And in Revelation chapter 12, he fought against the group of the dragon and overcame. In Revelation chapter 7, he created the 12 tribes. And he is testifying to the new covenant revelation all over the world and is carrying out peace work. 
However, just as Jesus was hated for no reason 2,000 years ago, today, Shincheonji is also hated. The reason is because both at the first coming and second coming, Satan is in control of the world. Lastly, let's read what it says in verse 26 and on. When the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Jesus said, that when the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, comes, He will testify about Jesus. Also, the disciples must testify about Jesus because they have been with Him from the beginning. Today, the Spirit of Truth, whom Jesus promised, is together with the promised pastor He overcomes, and they are testifying plainly about the promised revelations prophecy and fulfillment. Today is the, the era of reality when revelation is being fulfilled. Therefore, we must absolutely perceive the words of revelation and keep it without adding to or subtracting from it. Please listen to the words that are being testified, confirm it, and perceive the truth. Let's summarize the words that we learned today. Today's title is The Reality of the Tree of Life and the Tree of Good and Evil. The Tree of Life is God and the true pastor. He who overcomes and the organization, Shincheonji. The Tree of Good and Evil is the devil, false pastors, and their organization, Babylon. Also, the fruit of the tree of life is the words of truth, the revealed word, and the church members. The fruit of the tree of good and evil is false truth, that is, commentaries, and the affiliated church members. The time when those who are born of God's seed of life and those who are born of Satan's seed of death are separated is at the time of harvest. Today is the time of harvest which has been promised. And those who are harvested go to the heavenly barn, which is Shincheonji, the twelve tribes. And those who belong to this place are the reality of the first fruits grown on the twelve branches of the tree of life. Not being harvested and remaining in one's church is the evidence that they are born of the seed of death and they are they belong to the tree of good and evil. Lastly, through the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, I pray that we hear the revealed word of the fulfillment as promised. Verify with the Bible and become one in God and Jesus and love, forgive, and bless one another. Next time, an instructor will come to testify to Intermediate Lesson number 18, titled, The Effect of Jesus' Blood of Atonement of Sin. It will be very humorous and refreshing. I pray in the Lord's name that you will listen to the words that were given today multiple times, perceive it, and obtain the hope of eternal life and heaven. Finally, we will shout, we are one, as we are one in God and Jesus, and end here, surpassing ethnicity, nationality, and religion. We are one in God and in Jesus. We are one. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and we thank you again, our Holy Father, for your great love and grace. Today, through Shincheonji Online Seminar, pastors, theology students, and believers from all over the world were able to gather to perceive the true meaning 
of the secret of 6,000 years of the reality of the tree of life and the tree of good and evil. And for this grace, we thank you. In Revelation chapter 22, only the tree of life exists in this world. So we believe that the era of your reign is approaching us. Please help all believers who listen to today's words to become the reality of the tree of life and become part of it to obtain their hope in heaven in eternal life. So please help us and be with us. God, we thank you and we pray all these words in our Lord Savior, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to the end.